Imagine every plane, ship, and phone suddenly losing its map. Not because of a storm, but because someone flipped a switch. That's what Iran says it's preparing to do. Move away from the U.S. GPS system and switch critical services to China's Beidou, and even shut down GPS reception inside its borders. This isn't a picky tech swap. GPS is the invisible clock and compass for our world. It paces financial trading, guides planes and ships, times cell phone networks, and helps missiles find targets. If that system can be turned off or jammed, entire industries and lives can be affected in an instant. So the question is simple but huge. Can Beidou really replace GPS? And what happens if a country decides to cut the old system loose? Next, we'll look at how GPS became so central to everything we do and why replacing it matters. To understand why Iran's move is such a big deal, we need to see just how deeply GPS is woven into modern life. Most people think GPS is just for maps, for helping you find a coffee shop or the nearest gas station. But in reality, GPS is one of the silent pillars of the global economy. It's what pilots rely on to land in bad weather. It's what container ships use to navigate thousands of miles of open sea. It even keeps stock exchanges and power grids running by providing ultra-precise time signals that coordinate every digital transaction. In short, GPS isn't just about knowing where, it's also about knowing when. Every ATM withdrawal, every credit card swipe, every Uber ride, every text message depends on that split-second synchronization from GPS satellites orbiting 20,000 kilometers above Earth. And here's the key point. The entire system is controlled by the United States government. That gives Washington enormous leverage. In a crisis, the U.S. can technically degrade or deny GPS signals over specific regions, something that worries rival nations like China, Russia, and now Iran. That fear of being switched off is what's driving countries to build their own satellite navigation systems. And that brings us to the next part of the story how China's Beidou went from a regional experiment to a full-blown global rival to GPS. China's Beidou system didn't appear overnight. It began back in 2000, when China launched its very first navigation satellites. At the time, it was more of a regional backup, slow, limited, and mostly used for military purposes inside China. But what started as a safety net quickly became one of the most ambitious space programs in modern history. Beijing realized something critical. Whoever controls navigation controls mobility, and by extension, global trade and defense. The U.S. had GPS, Russia had GLONASS, Europe was developing Galileo, and China refused to be left behind. So, step by step, China launched more satellites. Not a few, but dozens. By 2020, Beidou officially went global with over 35 satellites in orbit, giving it full worldwide coverage, even more than the American GPS constellation. But China didn't stop there. They built redundancy and precision into Beidou. The system offers real-time positioning accuracy within a few centimeters in some regions, especially across Asia. For comparison, civilian GPS is typically accurate to about a few meters. China also added unique features, like short message communication, which lets users send text-like data through Beidou even without cell service. That makes it invaluable for ships, remote operations, and military missions where traditional communication could be jammed. In short, Beidou became not just a copy of GPS, but a smarter, more integrated network designed to fit China's strategic vision one where it doesn't need to rely on Western infrastructure to move, communicate, or fight. Now that Beidou covers the globe, it's no longer just China's project. It's becoming the backbone for an entirely new sphere of influence. And that's where Iran enters the picture. Iran's decision to pivot from GPS to China's Beidou isn't random. It's strategic, born out of both fear and ambition. For decades, Iran has been one of the most heavily sanctioned countries in the world. It's been locked out of the global banking system, restricted from Western technology, and constantly under the threat of cyber attacks and electronic warfare, 
GPS, being a U.S.-controlled system, is seen by Tehran as a potential vulnerability, a digital leash Washington could tug at any moment. Iran's military planners haven't forgotten history. In 2020, U.S. forces used GPS-guided precision to assassinate Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. To them, GPS isn't just navigation, it's a battlefield weapon that gives America near-omniscient control. So Iran's logic is simple. If you can't trust the system, build or join one you can. By switching to Beidou, Iran gains two things. First, independence. It can operate ships, planes, and missiles without worrying about U.S. interference. Second, partnership. Aligning with China gives it access to Beijing's satellite technology, mapping software, and potential military cooperation. And this isn't just talk. Iranian officials have openly stated they want to phase out GPS use across key sectors. Aviation, logistics, and even consumer electronics. Already, Iranian drones and missiles are reported to be using Beidou guidance for targeting and navigation. It's a powerful signal, literally and politically, that Iran is choosing the Chinese orbit over the American one. But this move isn't just about Iran's autonomy. It's part of a much bigger game, China's plan to build a digital silk road that redefines how the world connects. When most people hear Belt and Road Initiative, they think of ports, railways, and highways. But behind the concrete and steel lies another, more invisible layer, the Digital Silk Road. This is China's effort to weave a global network of technology infrastructure, from 5G towers and fiber optic cables to cloud servers and satellite navigation systems like Beidou. It's about data, control, and dependence. Here's how it works. When a country adopts Beidou for its mapping, shipping, or telecom systems, it becomes integrated into China's digital ecosystem. Every ship using Beidou navigation, every drone connected through Chinese networks, is tied into Beijing's orbit of influence. And Beijing isn't forcing anyone. It's offering a cheaper, faster, and more open alternative to Western systems especially to countries under U.S. sanctions or those wary of American surveillance. Nations in Africa, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America have already signed onto Beidou-related agreements. Iran's switch is one of the strongest endorsements yet. It's saying to the world, we're done depending on Washington's satellites. We're joining China's grid. For Beijing, this is about far more than just navigation. It's about reprogramming globalization, building a world where your phone, your ships, your internet backbone, even your city's traffic lights could one day run on Chinese systems instead of Western ones. And that's what makes Iran's move so symbolic. It's a test case of what the next phase of global power might look like. Not tanks and bases, but digital architecture and orbital alliances. But there's one crucial question. Can Beidou actually hold up under pressure, in war, in sanctions, or in real-world navigation stakes? That's what we'll explore next. Let's be clear. Replacing GPS isn't as simple as flipping a switch. The U.S. system has been around since the 1970s, refined over decades with unmatched accuracy, reliability, and global adoption. Every modern plane, ship, Smartphone and missile has GPS compatibility built into its core. It's the default setting of the world. So the question is, can Beidou really compete? Technically, yes. And in some ways, it already does. Beidou's global coverage matches GPS, with 35 satellites compared to America's 31. It also offers regional positioning accuracy of up to 10 centimeters, which is better than standard civilian GPS. In Asia especially, Beidou often provides faster signal acquisition and stronger coverage. But here's the catch infrastructure and ecosystem. While Beidou is advanced, the devices, software, and international standards around it are still catching up. Most commercial smartphones and airplanes still default to GPS, even if they quietly use Beidou as a supplement. That means full independence, 
cutting GPS entirely, requires massive hardware changes and re-engineering across industries. Then there's trust. The U.S. military's GPS system is globally verified, used even by its rivals because of its reliability. Beidou, on the other hand, is run by China's military. Some nations fear that using it could expose sensitive data or give Beijing a kill switch over critical systems, the same concern Iran has toward the U.S. So while Beidou is powerful and growing fast, its dominance isn't guaranteed yet. It's like a new operating system trying to replace Windows, technically possible, but it takes time, scale, and global confidence. However, with each new partner, from Pakistan to Saudi Arabia to now Iran, Beidou's reach expands. And the more countries that join, the harder it becomes for Washington to keep GPS as the world's default network. That growing momentum brings us to the next question. What happens geopolitically when navigation itself becomes divided? A digital East versus West. If the Cold War was about nuclear arms and ideology, the next one might be about satellites and signal control. What's happening with GPS and Beidou isn't just about technology. It's about who defines movement, trade, and communication. A world split between two navigation systems means more than competing apps on your phone. It could shape the very structure of global power. Imagine two shipping routes one mapped and tracked through GPS, and another through Beidou. Two different air traffic networks, two different timing systems for finance, even two separate standards for autonomous cars. That's not science fiction. It's already starting. For example, Pakistan, Russia, and several Gulf nations now use Beidou in their infrastructure and defense systems. The European Union runs its own Galileo network to avoid total reliance on the U.S., and the U.S. military, in response, is investing billions into anti-jamming, backup timing, and next-gen satellites to secure GPS from interference. This divide is more than symbolic. It's strategic. If war ever breaks out, nations tied to different systems may literally see the world differently. GPS could be jammed in one zone, Beidou in another, leaving each side blind to the other's coordinates. Economically, it's the same logic as de-dollarization, but for navigation. Just as China and its allies want to reduce dependence on the US dollar, they're now reducing dependence on America's satellites. It's digital sovereignty, control over your own signals, your own sky, Iran's switch, then, isn't isolated. It's a reflection of a broader shift. The world is fragmenting into technological blocks, each with its own maps, money, and data flows. And if this trend continues, it could lead to something we haven't seen since the early Cold War parallel worlds of technology. Separate, incompatible, and competing for dominance. But how might this new navigation war actually play out in practice? and who stands to gain or lose the most. That's where we're headed next. Think of it like this. In the past, wars were fought over land and oil. In the future, they could be fought over signals. Satellites are the nervous system of modern warfare. They guide missiles, track troops, and feed intelligence data in real time. If you can disrupt or control that network, you don't just win battles, you can cripple entire militaries without firing a shot. That's why both Washington and Beijing are now hardening their systems and building tools to jam or spoof each other's signals. The U.S. military has developed anti-spoofing GPS for precision weapons. China, meanwhile, is training its army to operate in signal-denied environments, where GPS is blocked or replaced by Beidou-only systems. And Iran, it's following the same playbook. Reports suggest its drones and cruise missiles are now guided by Beidou coordinates instead of GPS. This means in a conflict, Tehran could still strike targets even if the U.S. cuts off or jams GPS access, something that was impossible a decade ago. We're entering an era where countries will not only build tanks and jets, but also launch constellations of satellites to protect their digital territory. 
It's a space-based arms race, but instead of nuclear deterrence, it's about who owns the world's timing, positioning, and data grid. The scary part is how invisible it all is. You won't see the navigation war on your newsfeed. It'll unfold in quiet signal interference, malfunctioning drones, and blacked out ships lost in the fog of electronic warfare. And for ordinary people, it could mean something we've never had to think about before. The possibility that your phone, your maps, or your power grid could suddenly go dark because of a conflict happening hundreds of miles above Earth. So what does this all mean for the balance of power and for the future of the global internet itself? That's what we'll unpack in the next section. The fight over navigation systems isn't just about satellites. It's part of a much larger struggle called digital sovereignty. That means the right of a nation to control its own data, communications, and digital infrastructure without foreign interference. In the old world, sovereignty meant borders, armies, and governments. In the new one, it means servers, satellites, and software. China and the U.S. both understand this perfectly. The U.S. built its dominance through GPS, the Internet, and global payment networks like SWIFT and Visa. Every country that relies on those systems is, whether they admit it or not, dependent on Washington's rules. Now, China is building its own digital empire, one that includes Beidou for navigation, Huawei for 5G, Alipay for finance, and TikTok for soft power. It's creating a parallel ecosystem that could one day rival or even replace the Western digital order. Iran's move to Beidou fits that vision perfectly. By joining China's orbit, Tehran is not just switching satellites. It's signaling a deeper alignment with Beijing's world order, one that rejects Western control and builds autonomy from the ground, or rather, from orbit, up. This is why Western nations are nervous. Every country that adopts Beidou chips in its cars, ships, or drones is effectively locking into China's network. Over time, that creates dependency, a quiet but powerful form of influence. Think of it like app ecosystems. Once you're deep into Apple's system, switching to Android feels impossible. Now imagine that, but with entire countries, economies, militaries, and infrastructure locked into one side's digital grid. That's the real game being played here. And it's why Iran's shift is about much more than maps or missiles. It's a glimpse of a world where even geography itself, how we measure, navigate, and move, is split between two superpowers. But there's still one big question to ask. Where does this lead? What happens when every nation has to choose not just an ally, but a signal? The story of Iran switching from GPS to Beidou isn't just about satellites. It's a symbol of a world rewriting its own coordinates. For decades, the United States held a quiet kind of power, not through invasions or bases, but through invisible signals that guided everything from planes to payments. GPS was the heartbeat of globalization, a tool so universal we stopped noticing it. But now, that monopoly is breaking. China's Beidou has given countries like Iran, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia a way to opt out of America's orbit, to build their own independence in the digital sky. And as more nations follow, the world isn't just dividing politically or economically, it's splitting technologically one network at a time. We're entering an age where power isn't measured by armies or oil reserves, but by who controls the infrastructure everyone depends on. The satellites, the undersea cables, the chips, the networks, these are the new weapons and the new borders. So when Iran says it's done with GPS, it's really saying, we want our own map of the world. And that's the part that should make everyone pay attention because the next great power struggle won't be fought over land. It'll be fought over who owns the signal that tells you where you stand. If you found this breakdown insightful, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the bell. Because we're going to keep following how this new digital divide is reshaping the balance of power, one satellite at a time.